Hello everybody, my name is Ryan and I am the King of Booty Tab. Tonight, finishing up this video for uh, Monday Morning CAD. By the time you guys will see this, it'll be bright and early on Monday morning. i uh, see if I can uh, drop some pretty cartoon pictures in your faces and uh, show you guys what I got going on for the suspension. Now the other day, I did my basis of suspension video and I explained that what I got going on is going to be coming up pretty quick. I spent the last little while putting a solid plan together. The beauty of the CAD is that I can design it, I can cycle it, I can check my clearances and my angles, make sure everything works the way I want it to. And uh, yeah, I got all that done. So I'm going to go inside in a minute here and I'm going to get some screen grabs together, put together the whole video, take you guys along for the journey. For everybody that's been here before, thank you for tuning in again. Seriously, you guys mean the world to me. I love the entire YouTube experience. And for you guys that never seen me before, I hope you stick around. I swear I do some pretty cool stuff around here, and uh, it's only going to get better from here. Uh, if you haven't yet, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel, like the video if you pick up any tips, or you just had a good time hanging out with me. Drop me a comment if you got anything to say. Do the whole YouTube thing, and uh, yeah. Let's go check this out. So it's storming and ugly up here right now. That's some of the loudest thunder I've ever heard. But I uh, figured I'd show you guys the links I got going on. You've seen these in a few of the videos. All of these links here came out of Jeep JKs that got lift kits. Uh, a lot of times on four-wheel drives, when you're lifting them, you'll end up with longer control arms, adjustable control arms. These were essentially brand new and uh, just heading for scrap, so I saved them up. On my particular car here what I'm gonna do I'm using these links for the lowers in the rear these ones for the uppers in the rear this weird bend that's for tire clearance in the JK actually works out to help clear my frame I'm using these four for my fronts now they need to be quite a bit longer in the video or in the model that I'm gonna show you can see where I basically split the length and stretched it I haven't decided how I'm gonna do it but I love these big rubber bushings they soften the ride and they shut up the car you get rid of a lot of the road noise when you go with a decent rubber bushing. Love this way more than polyurethane on something like this. So I'm going to use these. And then I've got one more here. Uh, I think it's actually in the house that I'm using for the pan hard in the front. Um, the beauty of these is that if you got a local four-wheel drive shop, this kind of stuff up, ends up in the bin all the time. So if you got a shop, you know they're putting in lift kits all the time. You go down and talk to them. Tell them that you're building a rat rod. I mean, heck, you can use this for, use this right for another four-wheel drive project. It doesn't really matter. So many shops just throw these straight into the bin because guys lift in Jeeps. I mean, the new JK came out and every single dealership had a lineup of guys that wanted to lift them right away. There are so many of these that went for scrap. And even if they weren't going for scrap, if you had to buy these brand new, I think I found a pair of these links for 120 bucks brand new. With the bushings already blasted in there. I mean, it's not a horrible deal, but it's even better when it's free. So uh, that's my tech tip today. If you guys are looking for links for stuff, go see your four-wheel drive guys. Take them a case of beer. They'll probably love you for it. I've shown the back axle, you know, several times. I think I've even got a video somewhere with the links kind of modeled up in the back. But that's sitting back here. This axle's floating a little bit. So where it's sitting right now isn't necessarily where it's going to end up front to rear exactly. Um, but the front suspension is going to mount to plates that bolt down to where the U-bolts go through. This helped me to locate it. It gives me a basis for my measurements. So when we're looking at the model in a minute, the plates, that's what they're bolting to side to side. The frame was always obviously built in CAD before I built the frame. You can go way back in my history for that and show the whole process if you were wondering. But this frame... It's exactly what I, the model is what I built this frame off of. The axle that I've got in my model, it's close, but it's not perfect. But for my purposes, it'll do just fine. The biggest thing is that it gives a place to locate the tires. And I actually located this spot here. So when I show you this in the model, this is where my bar's hooking up. You'll see it in the model, just so you remember then. That's the hole there. That's bolting up there. The motor in the model is pretty close to this. I basically just modeled it up for looks. It's not exact. 
I ran some rough measurements on it, but it's probably give or take an inch here and there. Either way, it's not a big deal. And the car body, I've got a background bitmap on my software, so in one angle you can see the body. But the rest of the time, what I've got in the model is just the bare chassis. So uh, I just wanted to get all that out of here, you know, break it down quick before I go inside. But yeah, I'm going to kill the lights. We're going to go inside where it's quieter and uh, I'm gonna check this all out. Well, guys, I know it's been a while since I've done a Monday morning CAD. I've been under the weather and I hurt my back, but I'm trying to get back at it. So for you guys that have seen this before, you know where I'm going. But for the newcomers, I do most of my programming in Rhino 3D. So what you're looking at right now is the four screen window. This is basically the model that I put together of my rat rod. Um, I've designed virtually everything in this except for the nine inch and the side draft carbs. Um, the intake manifold that's on that motor, that's the intake that's on there. What I want to do is break down the suspension that I've got going on. So I pulled the bomber seats out and we're going to get into the rear end first. Now, I showed you guys earlier in this video the links that I'm using. These are all links that came out of a Jeep JK. The airbags in this case are Airlift Dominator 2600 pounds. They're 9.7 inches of stroke, I believe. About 8 inch round. Super good quality bag. Um, the back end is super simple. I've gone with a mildly double triangulated four link. Now, if you watch my suspension video, you understand that's the angle of the upper and lower links. Double triangulated means they both kind of converge. Um, and looking at the top view here, you can see my lower links have about five degrees each. It's not a whole lot. Upper links have 25 degrees on each we need a minimum of 40 degrees combined to locate an axle so 25 25 and 5 and 5 we're looking at about 60 degrees on mine this is more than enough for what i'm doing and you can see it's all packaged pretty tight if you're looking at the lower links there you can see where the bend that i talked about is actually beneficial in this case because it's helping to clear that frame rail in my c notch when it's at full bump and I mean, that axle's way up there. You can see from the background bitmap where the diff is almost touching the window. That's what it is in real life. What I have everything saved like is I've got everything saved in layers. You can see my menu on the right and I can turn it on and off. So it allows me to run one model, multiple places, multiple conditions, compare directly. The first picture was it stuffed all the way up car on the ground this is full extension this is uh the airbags work out to i think it's 12.7 inches fully extended it's about what these are and you can see here the mounting plates my lower links hang off quite a bit trying to keep the geometry reasonable at ride height which will be about half travel now my airbag model isn't quite right here you'd see how it's not quite aligned with the lower plate it doesn't matter, the airbag will twist where I need it to. So for my purposes, I was more concerned about getting it in there. This is more of a visual thing than anything, being able to see how everything sits. But these are not small airbags. I mean, the beauty of the bigger airbags is I can run lower air pressure, and that means I get a softer ride, as opposed to a lot of guys that are having to run 100, 120 PSI. I might be able to blast down the road at 40. It's going to soften up the ride quite a bit. Now, we'll just stuff this baxle all the way back up to bump here, get the car back on the ground, and I'll slide it up to the front end so that we can take a look at that. Now, I haven't decided if I'm going to retube the links in the front or if I'm going to extend them, but for visual purposes, you can see where I've split the links. I've lengthened them by about 18 inches. They're long, but that's to solve bump steer with my push-pull cowl-mounted steering. I talked about this in my suspension video. Um, they tuck into a notch in the, in the cowl. And when I was pointing out on the front end where the U-bolts go, this is the bracket I was talking about. Bolts down to the four holes. I've got a center pin location to hold it straight. Just to the outside of that, closer to the camera, is the tube. Now, what I've got going on here is a parallel four-link with a pan-hard bar and a cantilever airbag mount. 
I'm not a huge fan of pan hards because of the lateral movement, but the way I've got this car set up, this pan hard is 36 inches. I actually measured out the actual lateral movement and it's 0.73 inches with 10 inches of travel. It's not even going to be noticeable side to side, so I'm not even concerned about it. Average driving, this diff's going to move about a quarter inch side to side, so we're just going to let it do exactly what it wants to do. The advantage of the setup, of course, is that it's more compact than a triangulated system. I do still have to fit a radiator up here. That's why the cantilever bag's running straight up. I got lots of room in the middle for a radiator here. And the carbs are at about top of the cowl hood-ish level, top of the grill. So the nice thing is, is that those arms, they're not protruding huge above everything else. And once it's all tucked down, I'm making use of all available space on this car everything is fitting exactly where it needs to fit aesthetically i truly love the way the front end of this looks when it's down on the ground but the nice thing is is that i i've managed to keep everything tight and looking good and it's going to function this is going to give me a suspension because of the parallel four links it's going to be predictable no matter what the height. I've set it up so that it doesn't have a lot of caster change throughout travel. And you can see here, axle moves straight down. You can see these bags. Now, the way this is set up, that's what the axle pushed down 10 inches. And the bag itself has only moved 7.5 to 8 inches on a 10 inch stroke bag. That means that this isn't the full capability of the suspension. Now, on the back end, I wanted the softer ride to be able to control a trailer with more adjustment. And in the front end, that's where the weight is. I want to be able to get the height. The roads I blast, they're logging roads, big rocks, big potholes. I want a suspension that's going to be forgiving. Now you can see here, this isn't quite max extension, but it's starting to get close to it in the front end. The bars are pretty vertical from the cantilever setup. Um, the pan heart isn't on a ridiculous angle yet. I mean, everything's still working here, um, but 10 inches of lift on a rat rod is a whole lot of travel. This thing's looking like a four-wheel drive at this point, but all of the suspension is explained in a much longer Vizio previously, so pause it here. If you don't understand what's going on, go back to my suspension video. I break it down pretty easy there. The links that I've got in the front end here in the parallel four link, they are this length because of my steering. Other than that, the only constraints is where do I want the tire to be and how do I want to do the bags? I specifically wanted cantilever airbags on this car just because I can. It worked out pretty good and I'm, I'm super happy with how this is coming together. And you can see once we put the tires back on it, it's got a cool stance to it the front end is going to look wild you can just see the cantilever arms peeking over the top of the tire i think these tires are a hair smaller than what's actually on the car rear tires are a hair bigger than what's actually going to be on the car at the end of the day that's all going to change a little bit it just happened that's the models that i had sitting here but you can see the rear of the front links if you look at where that cowl is it is tucked into the car. I've got to notch it out. I've got Sharpie marks on the car where I've been planning to do this all along. Um, so I knew that was coming and the molded piece that was all bead rolled that I put into the car, the floor is already notched high enough so that that axle will clear. Now, if you were looking at the video and noticed that big blob at the back of the car, I didn't forget about that. I got the Harley here and... My wife's not a huge fan of me riding it out on the logging road. I need a trailer anyways. So I figured why not build a trailer on air ride. I've got a second set of slot wheels. This is set up on a trailing arm style setup. So the highlighted spot there was another trailer hub. I'm going to mount trailer hubs to uprights. This will be better brace. But essentially I'm building a trailing arm with a cantilever airbag, running six lug hubs with brakes. That'll match the rear of the rat rod. I've got a second set of 15 by eight and a half slots coming. The deck on this trailer is gonna be four by eight, but the goal of it is a trailer I can haul behind the rat rod. It looks like it belongs. I can put it behind my truck. I can put the Harley on it, and it's just good for everything. I'll probably put a set of 40 style car fenders on it. 
Not much tin work. Kind of a utility trailer, but I figure being able to roll into a show with the Harley on the back of the trailer, dump the air and everything, drop it in the weeds, it's going to look crazy. Now, the beauty of CAD is that if I want to look at things side by side, all I do is copy and paste. So this is 10 inches of lift compared to on the ground, fully aired out. And the beauty of it is that I can actually put these models side by side. I can look at the different views. I can directly look at how they compare to each other. And since both chassis are level here, I've cycled it up. Um, I think I'd have to measure it here, but uh, it's right around 10 inches of up travel, hair over. Um, I can cycle it up that high and I can see the differences. And a lot of times this gives me the opportunity. What do we have here? Oh, there we go. Just over 10 inches. So I know that this is the full stroke of the rear bag. In the front, the bags will stroke farther than that, but I can compare it all. I can look at the changes. I can see the upright arms for the cantilever. They're almost vertical there. They're not going to get into the tire quite. I got a little bit of room. And from the side, you can see, this puts the bottom of the frame halfway up the door compared to air out. The nice thing is, this isn't going to drag over speed bumps. I'm going to air it straight up. The nice big bags means I can get full lift at a much lower pressure. I mentioned that before. But being able to get that full lift at a lower pressure means if I want to... I don't need it to ride like a brick to get it tall. And for where I'm driving, that is a huge godsend. Um, I like to be able... You know, if I'm going to run air ride, I want to be able to lift it up. You can see here the cantilever airbags working. Don't mind the model. They're not exact, but... That kind of gives the gist of what I'm planning for it. This is something down the road, but since I bought four wheels, I wanted to plan ahead for it, really. I think it's going to be a perfect match, considering my other car runs slot wheels as well. This is a trailer I can pull behind anything I own, and it'll just work. Um, obviously, I've got my seats on the model here. These were programmed in a prior video. If you want to check that out, I show you how to do it in a Monday morning CAD video back in the archives. Um, all of this stuff here, I can pull DXF files. I can send this straight out to my buddy Dustin down at Back for Fab, have him fire it out on that nice plasma table of his, and everything will fit because I built it to the model. Now, I crammed a lot of info into here. I hope you guys got that. If not, rewind, play it again, pause, drop me a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Like the video. Tell me what you think. And I'll see you on the next one.